Good evening, folks. We have received a lot of questions in our contact form about being able to time the galactic current sheet hitting us. Can we do it based on the nearby stars, the planetary changes? Well, the answer is that no, we can't. And we don't need to, because it's already here. Hopefully you have seen our videos or you have our books containing all the evidence they have found of the galactic current sheet's existence both here in the Milky Way and at other galaxies, all the spiral galaxies they've studied in that way, actually. Representing the central electric field segmenting the magnetic sectors of the galaxy, bringing the galactic magnetic reversal. While there are only a few spiral arms in spiral galaxies, the rippling spiral density wave of the current sheet is phenomenally more wrapped around, to the point where when scientists try to plot it, it looks pretty ridiculous. In terms of using the nearby stars and planets in our solar system to time it, I wish it was that easy. But here's what we can deduce. The galactic version is just a bigger version of the sun's current sheet. And that means we can look at crossings like Earth hitting the sector boundary in the solar wind. These last for a few hours every seven to 10 days, which means that the thickness and speed of progression make the galactic current sheet crossing about a 150 to 300 year event every 12,000 years. Since the last super flare from the sun in 1859 was also the exact time our modern pole shift began, it's not a bad guess to suggest the sheet arrived back then and is causing the effects we're seeing around the solar system now. In terms of the nearby objects like stars and planets, this is not like getting hit by a truck. As I said, it's a slow onset and development of change until the flipping moment. Every star will react a little differently and take a different amount of time to react, and the same goes for the planets. So looking at the ongoing shift, it's probably a function of size, atmosphere, magnetic field in terms of how fast we're seeing the changes on the planets. Because at the scale of the galactic sheet, there's not much of a difference between one side of our tiny solar system and the other. FYI, this is the chart of ongoing changes leading up to the zenith of the disaster from our latest book. And since its release earlier this year, we've also had to add Neptune's major cooling event and the above average or increasing energetic neutral atoms and interstellar pickup ions, ENAs and IPUs. I do wish there was a better answer on tracking the sheet, but in fact, we don't have to. It's here. And the evidence is now far more numerous throughout the solar system than I would have ever imagined it would be. Check out our video playlist listed below the video or our books on the ongoing disaster to learn more about all of these topics. And I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.